So hello everyone and very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's session, we are going to talk about the PIB news from 12th of July to 15th of July. And after this session, all the backlog guys will be covered, right? So let's begin with the session without any delay. But before we begin, if you want to ace the examination this year, uh, you can join the live session course. We have started a live class course for all the regulatory bodies examination, be it RBI, SEBI or NABAT, right? And NABAT ka exam have chuka hai. notification is out now. So if you want to ace the exam this year only, so you can join this uh, live class course, right? And if you want to have the all round preparation of your examination, you can download Piano Jindal app from the Google Play Store. And now let's talk about the very first question, which says, Consider the following statements with respect to IRRI, which is International Rice Research Institute, South Asia Regional Center, and you have to identify the correct statement. This is a separate organization of IRRI, right? In, and this, in short, is known as ISARC, right? IRRI, South Asia Regional Center. So let's talk about this news. So remember, a memorandum of agreement has been signed between the Department of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and International Rice Research Institute. Now, why this MOA has been signed? What is the objective? So this MOA, guys, has been signed for commencement of phase two activities of IRRI, South Asia Regional Center. Now, what is this phase two activities of IRRI, South Asia Regional Center? To scale up the existing partnership for food and nutrition sec uh, security in the South Asian region, right? Now, the thing is, what is this phase two activities of IRRI? South Asia Regional Center is in the kya kya hongi. Let's talk about it. Remember, this second phase of this program proposes to increase the farmer's income. It proposes to improve the food and nutrition security in the South Asian region. It proposes to improve the health and well-being of small farmers, right? And all these things, all these objectives will be achieved through increased system productivity, reduced yield gaps, enhanced climate resilience, and mechanized and digital farming, right? So these are some of the interventions that will be done under the second phase of ISARC. And this second phase, remember, will be carried out in three thematic areas, right? Three thematic areas will be there. And the targets, the objectives will be achieved in the upcoming five years. Now, which are these three thematic areas? These are rice value addition, sustainable agriculture, and innovation and research for development, right? So these are the three thematic areas jiske upar kaam kiya jayega in the upcoming five years. Now talking about ISARC because the question is about ISARC only. So remember it is a regional facility which caters to South Asian region and Sub-Saharan Africa. South Asian region and Sub-Saharan Africa only, right? Please remember this. And its name is its full form mein hi iska jo region hai wo already mentioned. Hai, hai? So it is a regional facility that supports research, collaboration, training and other things to institutions, scientists and other stakeholders in this area from India and South Asian and African nation. Its objective is to support the rice growing nation as uh, it is clear from its full form. It is IRRI South Asian Regional Center, right, which is talking about the, uh, you know, rice research. So the objective of ISARC is to strengthen the capacity of rice growing country in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. This was established in the year 2017 in Varanasi. And where in Varanasi? At the campus of National Seed Research and Training Center. All right. And of course, Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh, as you all know. Now, the very important fact about this organization is the, it is the first research center of IRRI to be established outside Philippines. Now, Philippines is the headquarter of International Rice Research Institution. And it is the very first organization. It is the first research center of IRRI, which was established outside Philippines. All right. So that's it about this news and now let's come back to the question. What is the objective? The question is, the statement is talking about the objective. The objective of ISARC is to strengthen the capacity of rice growing countries in South Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa and Europe. See, South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa are there, but Europe is not there. So this is incorrect. It was established in 2018 at the campus of National Seed Research and Training Center in Varanasi. It was established at this campus, but not in 2018, but in 2017. So this statement is also incorrect. And it is the first research center of IRRI to be established outside Philippines. Yes, so this is correct, which means option C, only three will be the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number two. Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying, which is headed by Mr. Koshyottam Rupala, 
in collaboration with which of the following organization and industry associations has organized animal husbandry infrastructure development fund conclave to provide a platform for knowledge sharing launch of ahidf operational guidelines 2.0 revamped ahidf online portal credit guarantee online portal and inauguration of five major plan setup with the support of ahidf scheme now this operational guidelines 2.0 abhi details mein nahi aayi hai to once the details are out i will cover these guidelines also right so you have to tell the name of that organization in collaboration with which the ministry of fisheries has organized this hidf conclave remember the name of the organization is sidbi right sidbi ke sath inhone ye organize kiya hai it is animal husbandry infrastructure fund conclave now the objective of this conclave it was already mentioned in the question it is for providing a platform for knowledge sharing ahidf operational guidelines 2.0 revamped ahidf online portal which has been prepared by uh, with the help of sidbi right credit guarantee online portal and inauguration of five major plans set up with the support of this particular scheme now talking about ahidf so remember it is a 15000 crore fund established for in incentivizing investment by various uh, classes of company like individual entrepreneurs private companies fpos and section 8 companies now why this incentive why these incentives are provided for establishing dairy processing and product diversification infrastructure meat processing and product diversification infrastructure animal feed plant breed improvement technology and breed multiplication farms setting up of veterinary vaccine and drugs production facilities and finally animal waste to wealth management now you don't have to remember all these uh, infrastructure plant ye sari cheez aapko yaad rakhne ki zarurat nahi hai okay now the revamped hidf portal these are the key features number one revamped portal in bilingual content number one the content will be in the bilingual format number two there will be a customized dashboard with various analytical tools there will be a tutorial uh, video of hand holding applicants integration with google map for gis location of project site integration with civil which would be very useful for lenders integration with cgt mse portal for credit guarantee coverage and this portal is being maintained by sidbi right development of online claim generation module and ahidf portal help desk so these are some of the key features of the portal now you have to uh, remember these features ab isko ek sath yaad karne mat baithna bas ek do baar pad loge to aapke dimag mein aa jayega and in the examination you would be able to recall it right so that's it about this news and therefore the correct answer is option d sidbi sidbi is headquartered in lucknow sidbi is headquartered in lucknow and s raman is the chairperson of sidbi option d is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 3 union minister dr jitendra singh has participated in brics anti corruption ministerial meet which country chaired the meeting so as you all know this year the presidency of brics is with china and hence all the meetings will be chaired by china only so therefore the correct answer is china but that is not it we will talk about ki jo dr jitendra singh ne apne statement mein baatein kahi hain wahan pe ja ke so what are the steps taken by india to prevent the corruption right so first of all we have a prevention of corruption act of 1988 which provides for penalties in relation to corruption by public servants and also for those who are involved in the abatement of an act of corruption right isme hum ek amendment hua tha 2018 mein there was an amendment in the year 2018 which criminalized both the bribe taking and bribe giving as a criminal offense right then we have a lokpal and lok ayukta act of 2013 it provides for an establishment of of an ombudsman office for the central and state governments and these bodies are required to act independently from the government and these are empowered <coughs> sorry to investigate allegations of corruption against public servants which include prime minister as well theek hai prime minister aur baaki minister bhi iske ambit ke andar aate hain theek hai then there is an effective implementation of e governance to combat the corruption in the country and various tools have been used in this area like we have mca 21 fully automated income tax compliances commercial taxes compliances passport and visa services digi locker pensions dbt transfers common service centers all these tools are very helpful are proved to be very helpful in combating the corruption in the country and then we have a prevention of money laundering act of 2002 which aims to prevent uh, the 
instances of money laundering and prohibits the use of proceeds of crime in india the offense of money laundering prescribes the strict punishment which uh, which uh, under which the person can be punishable up to 10 years and the attachment of property right so these are some of the steps which have been taken by india to combat the corruption since independence and now let's come back to the question the correct answer is china as i already told you moving ahead to question number 4 Ministry of Consumer Affairs, uh, which is headed by Mr. Piyush Goel, who is also the Minister of Textile, Minister of Consumer uh, Affairs, uh, Minister of Commerce and Industry, and he is also the leader in Rajya Sabha. Right? He is also the leader in Rajya Sabha. So the Ministry of Consumer Affairs has set up a committee for developing an overall framework for the right to repair. Right? What is the meaning of right to repair? see under the right to repair repair what will happen is that the manufacturers the manufacturer will provide the basic diagnostic tools to the consumer so that they can do the basic repair on their own theek hai uske liye taki unko company ke paas na jana pade manufacturer ke paas dhakke na khana pade so this is the meaning of right to repair under which manufacturers will provide basic diagnostic tools to the individuals to repair the product themselves now the question is who is the chairperson of this committee So let's talk about this news. Remember, the Department of Consumer Affairs has set up a committee for developing an overall framework for the right to repair, and the committee is chaired by Nidhi Khare. Nidhi Khare is the chairperson of this committee. Now, the objective of this framework will be to empower the consumers and product buyers in the local market to harmonize trade between the original equipment manufacturers and the third-party buyers and sellers. and it will emphasize on developing sustainable consumption of products and reduction of e waste right now talking more about this particular meeting so during the first meeting various important sectors were identified uh, for right to repairs like we have farming equipment mobile phones tablets consumer durables and automobiles or automobile equipment and it is envisaged that diagnostic tools should be made available to third parties including individuals so that the product can be repaired If there are minor problems in the product, उसके लिए उनको मैन्युफैक्चरर के पास या फिर बड़ी बड़ी कंपनीज के पास ना जाना पड़े राइट एंड दिस राइट हैज बिन रिकॉग्नाइज इन वेरियस कंट्रीज लाइक यूएसए यूके एंड यूरोपियन यूनियन एंड देर फॉर गाइज द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए निधि खरे निधि खरे इज द करेक्ट आंसर मूविंग हेड टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ लेबर एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट विच इज एडेड बाई मिस्टर भूपेंद्र यादव एंड ही इज ऑल्सो द मिनिस्टर ऑफ एनवायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज राइट So this minister has participated in BRICS Labour and Employment Ministers meeting held under the presidency of China. The discussions were held on three priority issues. Which of the following are the priority issues on which the discussions were held? So this particular meeting may only be this thing important hai, that which are the three priority issues uh, on which the discussions were held. So remember the priority issues were promoting green jobs for sustainable development, developing uh, developing skills for resilient recovery. and protecting workers right in new forms of employment so 1 3 and 5 are the uh, priority issues therefore option c will be the correct answer to this question and of course the meeting was held under the presidency of china all right so yahan pe cheeze mentioned hai ye wahi hai iske alawa aur kuch padhne ki isme zarurat nahi hai all right now let's talk about question number 5 where has ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare headed by mr narendra singh tomar and his lok sabha constituency is morena in madhya pradesh organize the national conference of state agriculture and horticulture ministers now remember this uh conference was organized in collaboration with the state government of karnataka in collaboration with the state government of karnataka and therefore it was organized in bengaluru option a is the correct answer national mission for clean ganga has approved projects pertaining to industrial and sewerage pollution abatement through new technologies a forestation development of kali Kalindi Kunj Ghat landscape, which is in New Delhi, right? Actually, it is the border of New Delhi and Uttar Pradesh. It is the border of Delhi and Uttar Pradesh. Kalindi Kunj Ghat, right? Ah, uh, जो आप में से लोग Delhi और Noida में रहते हों ने पता होगा. What is the estimated cost of the project? Right, very straightforward question. The estimated cost of this project, guys, is rupees thirty-eight crores. Option C is the correct answer. Which of the following states has decided to rejoin the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana from Kharif 2022 season? I have recently discussed Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana in very much detail uh, for the Nabard uh, Grade A uh, 2022 upcoming. So, which state has rejoined this Yojana? Right. 
earlier this state uh, withdrawn uh, uh, had withdrawn from this particular scheme now it has rejoined the state is andhra pradesh option a is the correct answer and the last question for today with which of the following international organizations ministry of jal shakti which is headed by mr gajendra singh shekhawat and his lok sabha constituency is jodhpur in rajasthan has organized a national workshop under swachh bharat mission gramin to finalize the capacity building strategy and training calendar of each state and ut as a part of their efforts to make their villages odf plus very straightforward question basically a national workshop hui thi taki unki capacity building ki ja sake right and this was organized in collaboration with unicef option a is the correct answer and it is headquartered in new york and the current chief is catherine russell catherine russell is the current chief of unicef option a is the correct answer and that's it for the session guys i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear if you want to have the pdf of this session you can join the telegram channel the link is provided in the description and i will see you in the next session on wednesday goodbye take care and god bless